see I'm live. <laughs> Don't know why, but I have problems every time I'm trying to get on. I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. It is finally spring here in Canada, Ontario. <laughs> and I'm hoping that you're getting creative while you have this time at home. Today we're going to be um, drawing some cute little baby bunnies in their nest. And if you were here last week, you probably remember me talking about the um, <laughs> bunny nest that I found in my vegetable garden. <laughs> Luckily, I hadn't planted anything yet. And I'm checked. I checked on them today, and. They're pretty well on their own now. Hi, Gina. They're, I had to, um, I took three of them out. I've got a raised bed and it's, they're so tiny. They're only about the size of a chipmunk right now. And, but they're running around and their ears are up. Hi, Zandra, Christy, Shauna. So, I started watching them running around in this <laughs> raised bed. And I thought, I don't think that they're able to get out of this bed because the, it's too high for them. So I caught one. I had gloves on just to see, because I know the mama will, will stop feeding them after three weeks. And then they just go out on their own type of thing. But uh, they're not able to get out of that thing. <laughs> so I picked one up, felt its tummy, and it wasn't full. And um, did the, if you um, pinch the back, their back, and see if the fur goes down right away. It tells whether they're dehydrated or not. And they were a little bit dehydrated. So I caught three of them. <laughs> they're little buggers. <laughs> And they can get under stuff real fast when they have a bunch of leaves and twigs and stuff in this thing. So, hi, Linda. That's fine, Linda. So I got managed to get three of them out. So after this stream, I have to go and see if I can scrounge out the rest of them so they can go on their merry way and start eating my flowers <laughs> and grass. <laughs> But I think there's eight of them. And, oh, they're so cute. So hopefully I can find them all. So I'll just wait a little bit longer for more people to come in. Hey, Nana. Yeah, Nana. <laughs> Fleeting my flowers. I Like I said, it's a love-hate relationship. <laughs> they're so darn cute. And you know they're going to be eating your flowers. You just know it. Hey, Lena. <laughs> hey, Janet. So I th I don't think they're cottontails. I think they're jackrabbits. So, uh, I saw the mama, and she's a lot bigger than a cottontail. And their ears are black. So jackrabbits have this black line that goes around their, their ear. So we'll see. Never a dull moment here. <laughs> yes, bunny land here. <laughs> you're, you're listening and cleaning? Okay. <laughs> Clean away. Good to see everybody. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I have tons of flowers. So I think I'm going to try and um, dry a bunch of them this year. Because I know every year I, at the in the winter time is when you think about it. And you think, oh, I wish I had a, kept all those flowers and dried them and the leaves and stuff. So I'm making a point. Thanks, Lena. <laughs> Lena reminded me to do that. 
Hey, Gina. So I thought, what a great topic to do today. So we're going to do bunny. And so I had this picture here. And it's kind of hard to see, you know, they're <laughs> the only thing you can tell is the ears. So, so there's a pair there and there. I think there's one right there. But they're all squished in with each other. Hi, Eileen. So we're going to see what I can do with this. Make some grass and the fur that they line their nest in. And then I'm going to put it in my... Um, My, where did I put it? Oh, it's right here. My folder. Last week, you remember we did this? With stencils and acrylic paint and sprays. This is actual, it is actually a dried um, fern leaf that I just <laughs> glued on. So I thought we could do that today. And I just wanted to, you've probably seen it already, but I have started a membership. I was accepted. Uh, you have to apply and I was accepted. So yay. I've been wanting to do this for, well, I've been talking about it for a good year now. And I didn't know whether to go on, you know, different um, platforms. And then when I saw that you could, have it here I thought what a fantastic place to start a membership right here where you don't have to uh, go to another platform and sign in and all that you're just everything is in one spot so thanks guys so there is a join button now and if you're on a Mac or any Apple product I found out that they can't see that join button. So um, there is a link and I will have to um, actually, Janet, if you go on my web, my main page in about, there's a link for that. If you could put that up, that would be great. And you can use that link if you have Apple products. And it'll take you right to the uh, join members page. Hey, Judy. Lena. Linda. Devin. Hi. Kathy, I'm mama, my back and I can see the button now. Oh, really? Well, that's weird. Some people can't see it and they're on my, I don't know. I looked on, yeah, you know, so hard finding information on it, but that's what they said to do. That's weird. Maybe they fixed it. I don't know. But there was a lot of people having the same problem. Um, Yeah, yeah, you'll have to get the link to um, see it. Hey, Jersey. Cass had me crazy. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, Lee. I'm sorry, really. <laughs> I had her confused. <laughs> hey, Paula. So yeah, it was, uh, it's exciting and I've already, <laughs> if you see, uh, I'm still figuring things out and <laughs> you've, you probably actually noticed that there was a new video lesson up on public and, oh, thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining, guys. It's it's um, this is awesome, and I and I'm so excited to teach because I love teaching. I always have, and um, thanks 
for supporting me so I can do this. Thanks, Janet. Um, now, what was I saying? Mm -hmm. Bunnies, the membership. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, the lesson. Well, apparently you can't schedule stuff for the membership. Because <laughs> it came up. So you guys got a free sneak peek. <laughs> One of the lessons. Uh. <laughs> so, um, and so anyone that's going to start, um, Paula, you can't schedule them. <laughs> you have to wait for the day to, to um, put them up. Oh, Christy, you got a migraine, huh? Oh. Hey, Debbie. Hey, CB. Awesome to see you guys. So, I've got my watercolors here, and most of them are either, well, actually, there's about four different types of watercolor here. Um, I have Daniel Smith. I have M. Graham. I have of uh, Windsor Newton and Core by Golden. And I don't necessarily get the whole set. When I'm when I buy watercolor, I'm looking for a specific type of color or or um, shade, and that's what I do. Oh, thanks, Gina. Awesome. Because a lot of the colors in all the brands are very similar, but certain brands have a color that no one else has. And maybe you, you will use it. Because I like doing a lot of florals in nature. Um, there are certain colors of green that I will uh, like to have. Now, I could mix them, but I prefer, I'm kind of lazy that way. <laughs> I will, if I'm going to use a lot of that color and I know that, I'll just buy a tube of it. I love all the splats on the screen. <laughs> the, ink, the ink or, or um, <laughs> paint splats. Uh. <laughs> it's good to see everybody. So what I'm going to do is I did get out this book. You know me, I love my books. Um, a lot of you know Claudia Nice. And... Um, I love her work because she uses watercolor washes and ink. And I think it's so gorgeous. So I found this one of the bunny. Now I'm not gonna, I just wanted to see how she tackled the fur. And we're going to use a bit of that for the watercolor of the bunnies. But this is a fantastic book if you like nature. And she's very good at um, telling you how to go about doing everything in steps. So it is a really good book. And I love the fact that she has the writing instead of type. It's, it's just a pretty book. So if you've got any questions at all, you can just leave it in caps and I'll get right to you. <laughs> oh, what's, I've done the bunny. She show, oh, you did? Yeah, Claudia Nice, I love her work. As you probably all know, I'm more of a real, realistic drawer, painter. I love realism. You did a bunny too in this one? Awesome, Teresa. Cheryl, 
Wonderful to have you. Welcome, welcome. No, Sherry, can't see. Sorry. <laughs> the type is so small and it's on black. Sherry. Cherry? Like in the fruit, cherry? Sorry. So, now I've got my um, this is just bee paper and Paula you were asking about what side now I can feel the difference there's like this is the rough side and you can can see a lot of um, divots in the in the paper and this does look a lot smoother so but you can use both sides so if you're doing more um very detailed work most people like a fairly smooth finish on their paper so hot press papers um but you can do them on the rougher side but this isn't really rough so i'm just going to do it on this side if you have the divots that you're working in it pulls the um, paint and keeps it in those areas a little more. Um, whereas the other side, uh, some people find it's harder to do washes on. <laughs> Lena, you're going to do it? I'll keep my picture out here for you. Now with um, another thing about my membership, just to let you guys know, um, each tier, like if you're the first tier, you get the um, traceable, which I will leave a link for in the community section of the membership. And each tier up has its own perks, but you also have access to all the tiers below you. So you will also be allowed to have the traceables. Oh, thanks, Debs. Okay, so we're going to keep this guy so you can... I'll bring the I'll bring you guys in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Let's see. Zoom in a little bit. Now you're probably gonna want to see my paint, although it's only two colors I'm using really. There, that's good enough. All right, so I've just lightly, lightly, lightly put in where the bunnies are going to be. So they're not detailed. It's just um, kind of an outline of where everybody is in the nest <laughs> so I can figure it out. And what colors we're going to be using or I'm going to be using today are burnt sienna this one's a core and burnt umber which is core also They're very similar the sienna has got a little bit of a, rin, uh, a red tinge to it whereas if you got the raw sienna it's much lighter more gold color so you want the reddish tinge. So I'm just going to put them on my tray here so I can spray them. I, I just either spray if I can find my bottle. Yeah, there it is. Just a 
activate the paint. And I'm going to be using probably a fairly small brush for detail. Uh, let's see. Okay, we'll use a number eight for the bigger areas for washes. And my script liner. You'll want a script liner. This is a number one. Or a rigger will do also. Still had glue on it from the, or not glue, but soap for keeping it the proper uh, way of keeping things. And then I want a round, mm, let me think. Yeah. A little bit smaller round one. Eight's a bit big. Let's see. There we go. Okay. This one is a number two silver. Number two or even a four would work, probably. I might use a four. We'll see how it goes. Right? Oh, thanks, Linda. Shauna, awesome. Well, you guys that are joining in, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. Oh, before I start, I'll show you. I'll give you a sneak peek. Okay, this this is what <laughs> this is what went up when it was wasn't supposed to. <laughs> that was supposed to be um, one of your lessons, <laughs> but you got a freebie, and it's already up. Um, I will put the drawing up as soon as I uh, get it scanned and stuff. <laughs> I wasn't ready. Hi, Jilly. <laughs> and this is the one that will you'll be doing on the, I believe it's 26th. It'll be up. I believe the, I can't remember if I, yeah, I think the uh, traceable and material list or supply list is already up on the community page. And that's, this one here we'll be doing. <laughs> All right, so with this, I'm going to stop there with this um because it's so well they're all packed in there <laughs> what if we want to do is find try to find the areas of your lights we want to be able to keep those so if you've drawn really hard lines now because it's um ink and wash drawing it doesn't really matter too much but if you don't want to see your uh, graphite lines then take a kneaded eraser and just tap down on it don't rub it just tap down and it'll, it'll re remove the um, the lines a little so that it, it's much uh, lighter there see how light it is I can still see it Hey, Kathy. So, 
I've got a number eight silver brush here, watercolor brush. These are great. They're ec economically uh, great. <laughs> They're not going to put you to the poor house, but they do a fantastic job. Um, now, a lot of the, this is, I may not even need that sienna because it's not really a sienna. It's more on the burnt umber and Van Dyke brown. Almost a buff in the head here. But we could go a very, very light. We'll see. Let's see. I think I'll try the burnt umber first. And a light, light wash is what you want. So you want it watered down a fair amount. I should have got more water in my spray bottle. Make, about, make enough that, you know, so you don't want to run out while you're doing this. So I think I'm just going to do a very light coat right over here in the head. Not in the ears, though. So let's this guy here, I think. Oh, I got it upside down. Yes, I did. No, no. Oh, there it is. That's how it goes. I was wondering what this doesn't look right. <laughs> there. There. That's better. All right. So very, very light coat of this guy's little face. Around the eyes, there's kind of a white gray color. Um, and then just a bit down there, kind of around the ears. He has a little white dab on his forehead a white mark so remember these dry lighter he's got a little bit going into the top part of his ear too or the bottom part and then there's this guy here just basically around here his nose And I'm not sure what part of the body this is over here, but there's some colors here. And then here. Then this is a Van Dyke Brown by Daniel Smith. It's a nice dark Great for trees and animal fur, I find. It's almost a black brown. I like using it a lot in bark and stuff. Now you just want a really light coat for this too. Now he has a lot. Actually, it could be darker. And his, their ears are really dark. Just the edges. Right in here. Maybe a smidge. I'm going to let it bleed while it's wet. I'm going to wet this area so it 
bleeds into it. Wherever there's some really dark areas, this is where I'm going to put this Van Dyke Brown. So it's just a, this is your first layer. Don't worry about it. If it's too dark right now, the first layer is just placing it where you think those lights and darks are. Then we can go back on top of this when it's dry and add to that. So we can either darken it. You can even take it take some of it off by using a damp brush. remember to keep the highlights where they're supposed to be that's all those little eyes so just wet the paper and wet this here this is all fairly dark so I can intensify the Van Dyke Brown to be a little bit more pigmented. They are cute, but now I'm going <laughs> to regret it when I see them eating my flowers. Oh, well. So you can take some out. Even use your paper towel and just dampen the area if you want stuff taken out and just press down, it'll take it off. Let's see, this one here. A little bit of black here. darker where they're meeting and where they're all scrunched up together. Look around here. You know, it looks like one big blob, but <laughs> once I put the ears in, <laughs> you'll know what it is. Here. Yeah, I love granulation. I guess I should have this up on a tilt because I see them in this layer.
Is that better? Yeah. Just like that. I'll just put some tape. Tape. <laughs> it reminds me. Did you see my post on Facebook about a new way to use your washi tape? <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Like designer clothing designers are getting desperate. <laughs> Okay, let's see what everyone's got to say. Oh, yes, if you got bee paper, cherish it. Can't get it anymore. Yeah, I saw that, Debbie. You're, you have the 90 pound and you, it was terrible for you. Maybe if they changed their recipe of whatever they were doing that was hilarious i showed it to my <laughs> said that downside for men is it's undressed women wearing <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, that was so funny All right, now, this fur that's around them, it's a little bit on the bluey gray side. So I'm thinking probably, hmm. Just something very this one here. Yeah, what's this one? This one is Payne's Gray, Win uh, Windsor Newton. So a nice Payne's Gray, very lightly watered down, will work. You can put a little bit of that. Um, brown in with it and it'll gray it up a little more so i guess i better make a bunch of it so very light coat I'm just going to go around different strokes. Just so that it leaves some light areas. And then I can always darken it if I find I need some darker areas. Okay, now we should dry this. You can dry it on both sides. That way it'll stay flat.
All right. Now we have some green areas and I'm just gonna put a little bit of green in. And this is a very strong grass, body's grass green, very bright. So probably, um, let's see, this one here, chromium with maybe a little bit of yellow in it or, um, Permanent sap green by Windsor Newton. Let's try that one. Yeah, that will work. I'm just gonna clean my area out here. Yeah, so I'll grab a paper. So that's the green. It's permanent sap green by Windsor Newton. That's really nice green. I like that. So I want a little bit of a smaller brush to do this. You can use a script. Um, this is a number one. It's just a craft smart. Nothing fancy. So when you're using a script, it's a fairly long bristle. You want to make sure that your um, barrel is dry from any. And what you want to do is you want to hold it from the very end of your handle and hold it up, straight up. Don't hold it on an angle. And then you just kind of flick it in a round um start doing a round or oval shape and then you drop your brush down and you have to have a lot of and that way you get a really fine We'll do some fine ones and we'll do some thicker ones. You have to have a lot of paint on your brush or it won't do it. A little bit more water. A little bit more water in there. Now this isn't the best grip brush for doing a lot of these because it doesn't hold a lot of water. There are some really nice grip brushes out that you can uh, get now that are really, really nice. You could go on and on and on with without having to uh, refill it. All right, now what I wanna do is I wanna take that brush, oh, the big brush. 
I'm going to take some of this off. See where the fur is, because it's mostly. If you had a magic eraser, you could use that. Not a bit showing, but not a lot. So I'm more or less just dabbing it. You don't want to rub because then you'll start peeling the or not peeling, but you'll start to uh, ruin the surface of the paper. There. So now We can take a same brush and just do a really light coat of that green again over top. Just to give it some color in the background. Then you want some, let's see, Quinn Gold maybe, or Yellow Ochre. And you can get your smaller brush. Just gonna wet my ochre. And there's a little bit of dead grass. So I'm just going to put a little bit of that in here and there. Tab. Well, it's wet. And then you can, it, it kind of blends in. That much. Let's take some of it out there. And then there's some darker areas too, but I think we'll leave the darker areas till we finish drying this. I want them more sharp. Hey, Tori, Diane.
Yeah. <clears throat> We have some really dark areas. Like right in in the, in the fur even, right in here, little shadowed areas. And we can um, use some more Payne's Gray with a little bit of uh, the brown, but more on a gray side then. And we can, um, do those areas. The shading the areas in. If you have to go over top of it again, you can. This is supposed to be relaxing. Not stressful. Blend it out a bit. Then don't forget we're going to use some pen on this also. Let's see. We'll use white, also some white um, acrylic pen. It's just giving it a little bit of dimension. A little depth. Now this area here. I could probably go in with some more green, but thicker. dark in here. Doesn't look exactly like the picture, but you'll know what it is. Once we put the pen in, it just comes alive. <laughs> All right, let's put some more green. So grass
All right. Okay, any questions? Oh, thanks, Devin. What color is this blue? It was um, Windsor and Newton Payne's gray. Yeah, um, using a rigger it does take a little practice. So just, you know, get a sheet of paper out and fill the whole thing in directions that you want to go. Do the first part, maybe grass straight up, and then the next one, grass laying down, you know. And it's something a lot of people struggle with, but when it comes down to it, it it's practice. All right, so let's see. Now, there are little areas, too, that are really, really dark. We could take the time and do that if you want. Um, we will be doing a lot of pen work. So it depends, you know, how much you, you want to get it into it. So. You know, you could go in between the grasses and be very finicky, but you could do it. It's kind of like um, negative painting. So you just take a very nice, sharp point paintbrush and do negative painting. This is actually a really good way of practicing negative painting because you, you can't go too wrong <laughs> with it. kind of like doodling actually um it's relaxing if you like to doodle you'll probably like doing this now that you got me doing it Now, if you don't, that's something you don't like doing, then you could do a lot of pen work.
we do get into the zone. <laughs> Okay, so I'll just do that bit there. This could take hours. <laughs> All right, then let's try and do a little bit of pen work on here so I can show you that. So you want a fairly thin, small tipped. Now this is a one. This one is uh, a Uniball Fine, and it's a water and fade proof. These are really good too, and I also use the Microns. Um, this is a sepia color, and this one's more brown, dark brown, but it's almost black. It's almost too dark. So I'm going to try the... Um, well, it might work for this though, because this is more on the brown side. So let's let's try it. So when doing the pen and ink, I don't outline everything. It's kind of like a sketchy type of thing. You want to pay attention to the way the fur is running, because that can make and break your whole painting. Well, let's see. Okay, I lost my bunny ears. But there's a there is a line here. And I'm thinking this guy's You can always put white gouache in if you've lost your white areas. That's no problem. That's what I'll have to do here, I think. Because I lost the ear. This guy. Other ear near here. There. And there's little eyes here. Get a bigger five. A little thicker for here. Now he has his little nose muzzled in there, so you don't see it. <clears throat> but some kind sometimes you know you can improvise. It's your piece of work. If it's not looking um write to you and it's hard to distinguish then change it well i think this guy's that i think that's the nose of somebody <laughs> it looks like the mouth is there All right. Yeah, and that's the eye here. 
closed. There's an eye here. That's the other eye there. There. This guy here. Oh, I think there's someone at my right? Wait. Just hold on. <laughs> Somebody pick up an order. I didn't think they were coming till later. I probably lost a bunch of people. <laughs> oh dear. What was this one again? A one. I wanted the five. All right, so back to this.
Okay, so this is kind of guesswork because they're all jammed, <laughs> jammed in together. Um, but I see here this little line here in the first kind of going this way to a V almost, an upside down V. So that's this here. So it's and then it just uh, follows the head around and starts to straighten out. And it's just tiny little strokes. Very fine pen. And just evens out as it goes down its face. You can crisscross them too. You don't have to, um, like you can overlap them. this will kind of give a definition of what this is. <laughs> and as you get to where they're um, up against each other, you can make that area a little bit darker because that'll be shaded. Around his little ear here. Yeah, most of them have their little uh, nose tucked in underneath somebody else. <laughs> That's why it kind of looks funny in a way. But their bunnies there. They're just hiding their little noses. A little bit darker here you just overlap your strokes right along the edge put more of them in and that kind of gives you um, more of a depth I'm gonna have to fix this eye here. So, let's see, where's my gouache? Actually, let's use some of this. Let's see if we can use this. Oh. This is just the um, fiber castell white. It goes on fairly um, transparent, but it helps distinguish where. <laughs> now, if you want the more. Um, opaque, then just use some uh, acrylic. Now this little guy, that was his eye, and then his little mouth is right here. And then he's got a little pink nose. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of pink right here.
fist in the fur. And I'm going to try some marker too. I don't know where my wash went. I had it sitting here and I don't know where it is. Let's put some paint, coat paint from a paint pen in these areas just to darken it a little bit more. It's not working. Must be out. Ah, must be out. And here's one. Yeah, cane some dogs. <laughs> oh, did your dogs all go crazy when my dog started barking? A new one. Where's my other ones? Must be upstairs. Oh, for Pete's sake. Maybe I'll just get some more paint. Piece of paper. And don't use your uh, good brushes. Okay. A lot of people forget. I've done it too, but try not to do that. They don't seem to work the, quite the same way afterwards. I'm just going to kind of dry brush it in a little bit so it blends into the background a little. And Silver white. Now, if you wanted to, you could have put masking fluid on the ears to protect that white. Um, I'm a mixed media artist, so it doesn't bother me to have to do this. Some people are very strict about using other mediums on their watercolor, but if you don't like doing that, then put some masking fluid on. This guy should have a little bit of white around his. The lie. And 
there is a ear here, but you can't see anything else. So we'll just add that there. And he has a little bit of white around his mouth. Hi, Gail. Thanks for coming. So we'll dry that. Oh my God, they're barking again. I don't think anybody's there. He's a real yapper. Mm. I don't think it's anyone. Because the other one's not barking. You usually tell. <laughs> I have to put it this way to get the hair right. Little nose. make it as it goes down towards that this is the nose here just uh make it a little further apart the strokes so that because it gets very fine there you're not going to really see a lot of the that fine of a um hair Takes a while to do this. Don't rush, just enjoy it. All right. And let's see. Fix this up a bit. It curves in more. This one goes down more. darker here. Darker here.
And this guy. Yes, I think that's the back end of one of them. <laughs> so you kind of have to think about how their little rump would be going. You just keep doing it. Okay, so number one on this, as we start to go up, I get gets a little finer. I'll have to put show as much of a um, collection of of hairs, and you can just lightly. On the direction, I'm kind of centering it so it, like a circle is the way I'm looking at it. As I get to this part, which would be the highest part of what I'm seeing, I'm putting less um, hairs condensed. So it gives it a little bit more dimension. There, it would be a kind of a center point where hairs would be going in a certain direction and then not. You can overlap some of them, twist them up a little bit so they're not so perfect. And it's cute too sometimes with birds if you give them a little bit of a messy feather or, or these give them a little bit of fuzz on them they kind of look cute there see uh, so it just adds a little little bit of dimension to the now this guy here you would have uh, on the other way. Let's see. Little lines. They do this type of pen work does look really cool though. I know it takes a while, but I think it's relaxing. And it does look really neat when it's done. Usually with their around their eyes, it goes in a, di a different direction. You can um, look up on Google or Pinterest um, pictures of whatever you want to do this in and uh, study it. That's what I do. See what, see what the direction of the hair seems to be going in.
Now this, okay, there's, this is a body, I believe. <laughs> and it's going this way. A little bit of a bigger pen for this. Is anyone doing this with me other than um, Lena? Um, this one is a, uh, it's called Unipin. Unipin. Uh, focus. I don't want to focus. That's a point uh, five. And this one is also the same. They're, they're um, fade resistant and waterproof. And that's what I like getting. Okay, this guy. It's a little rump goes around like this. Now I can always go back over top of this also with a uh, with a bunch of watercolor again because it's a waterproof pen, which is nice. And that's why I prefer using waterproof. Um, things that aren't going to reconstitute when I'm doing this type of art. There's nothing more maddening <laughs> than when you get all this pen work done and then you decide, oh, I need a little touch of this watercolor. And you go and wet your page and your pen disappears after all that work. <laughs> So test your pens out just to make sure it's true that it's waterproof because sometimes it's not. It's very frustrating to put in that kind of time and have your artwork disappear on you. See, it was a whole lot easier to, um, when you put the pen work in, and then you can go back into shade air, um, certain areas, because you'll see where everything's supposed to go. It's kind of hard recognizing <laughs> what's what, especially in this one. You don't know whose head is whose, and... Is there any questions? <laughs> Janet. And it fell in a hole. A pen hole. Not good.
So I like doing this type of work um, for my, I guess you could call it um, art diary. So whatever's going on for the week, you can write about it or you can draw about it. And I think it's a really neat way of getting your brain to think differently, be more creative in your your thought process for doing things, trying out different stuff. It's almost like when you were little and before you knew how to read or write, we used to draw pictures to express what we were thinking or doing. And we've been away from that for so long, nobody knows how to do it anymore. So it's a neat process to get back into. Draw your day. needs or she whoever needs a little bit more definition in here Okay, and then right here, I'm not sure, I think it was supposed to be there. It's up a little bit, but let's see, it looks like a head. <laughs> I see that little line down there. This here is a ear of one of them. All right, I think that has to be dark there. We can darken those areas. Okay, so there's the, <laughs> that's how I figured it out. <laughs> really, when they're all scrunched in together, there's, there's, just throw a bunch of heads and bodies in and it'll look all right. They are, they're just tangled up together. Found the nine pen set for 18 hours. Hmm. Is the 24 hour rule in effect? No, I don't think so. 18 bucks for that? Yeah, I'd, I'd be pressing the button. That's a good price. All right. So let's, I'm going to heat set that just to make sure. All right, 
Now you can use, you can do the same thing with your pen as far as um, doing your lines. You can make some uh, darker areas. It all depends on how, you know, how detailed you want to get. You can make the uh, grass have a shadow on it on one side. You can give it some kind of um, rough edges if you wanted to. It's endless. It all depends on how, how much detail do you want in it. I like detail myself. Like I could spend hours doing this. Um, like we could add some, let's use the real fine one. Some of this. make some marks in it with um, different size pen nibs. And it will just give it more um, textural look to it. Go slightly over your subject matter too. Just um, makes it a little more realistic. And then you can take another Lightly, don't go down too heavy, but a few odds and ends of the marks. Not as many as um, the finer one, but Then you can take a white pen and do the same thing. Matter of fact, let's try this. Let's try doing some of this. Kind of um, fades out. And then fine white pen. Let's see what we got here. A jelly roll, it's this one. Yep. That's not going on. Let's see. Sharpie paint pen. See if this one works. Or if you got one of those uniballs, I think I might have one somewhere. Let's see. We'll try this first and then we'll see what this one does. I don't even know if this one works. Old one. Nope. 
That's garbage. This is a good way of using this because you want it to skip. So these kind of skip a lot. Gives it that fur look. And it does blend in a little bit. Yeah, it looks kind of fluffy. All right, now we need a little bit of gray in their ears for some shading. So I'm going to just take this real fine brush and a little bit of this brownish blue and make a little bit of gray. They just have just a bit. A bit of gray in his mouth. And right in here. Add more shadow now because your pen is dry. You find areas that you want a little more darker. This is when you can do it. Go right around in here. In here, I'm just kind of it's like when you're doing a sphere, you kind of think about how it would be, um, the shadowing would be going. So these are a little, it's either the butt of the bunny or 
something sticking up there. So this one has to be a little bit darker. Little face needs to be tucked down a bit. And then their ears are really dark. So let's put a little bit more black in there. Well, not black, but it's Van Dyke Brown. A little bit more in here, I think. Yeah, so far. And we'll just Just a little too bright. There. There's the little bunnies. I think that should be dark. Hard to distinguish what it is. In there. <laughs> it's cute, eh? So you can finish up with, you know, taking your marker and your, just go back and forth and play with it. You know, there's lots of, like I could take bits along the outside and take um, a dark green even. If you wanted to, 
That would look cool. So it's, it's the trick is not to completely draw down um, each single leaf. It's it's kind of sketchy actually. It, ju it just enhances what's there. So you don't want a, a bunch of um, lines down the whole entire width of of your um, grass or whatever it is you're you're drawing. It's just bits and pieces. And, and this takes practice. I won't lie. It's it's um, trial and error, like most things in art. And that's what basically art is all about: learning. And you can't learn it unless you do mistakes or, or things that don't turn out. Okay, got it. Um, thanks, Shauna. Debbie, Debbie, did you ask for something? I thought it was bird's nest till she did the Um. And I must cook too much because I see. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So, yeah. So we'll put that in our... Where's my folder here. Let's put this down here. We'll bring you out a little bit. So we could just have it here. I could actually, you know, it would look really cute. I'm going to tear it, tear the edges. I know people don't faint. <laughs> It's just paper. This is how you experiment with your stuff. It's just paper. There. Then I could take, um, yeah, it looks even more nesty. Then I could take, let's see, take a sponge. And get some sepia here. Just go around the edges with some sepia.
That look cute and matted in a frame, just like that. There. So I could just put it there or up here. Could have it either way, really. That's kind of cute, down like that. Or you can have it over here. Cute. Yeah, it's, it's that's what I mean. Uh, so much happens to you, and you always write about it. Why not draw it? I think it would be so much more. Um, you would notice things more if you knew you had to draw it. You have to think about how you would draw that particular whatever happened. So this will have a memory to it as soon as I see it. Now, if you want, you could put on something in the back of this. Um, There's all kinds of ways of applying this, but this is how I'm going to um, put mine down. Maybe I'll, I don't know. I could have a separate little pocket here with a note in it if I wanted to. But like, if you want to, when you're doing these, um, art folders, it'd be kind of a cool idea. Don't fix everything down right away. If you have a lot of loose art, wait till you're done the month and then play with it to see how you would like to put it all together. Yeah, Janet, draw the baby geese. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> Poor little things. They get, uh, not too many of them survive when they leave the nest, I'm, I'm afraid. Between, you know, cats and birds and... But they got lots to hide under. All my flowers. <laughs> they got lots to eat, too. <laughs> Okay, so I hope you enjoyed, and um, for all you members out there, thank you very much, and make sure you check the community post on the membership, because there will be um, downloads for you, and if you got any um, ideas, like, feel free to suggest things, because what I'm going to be doing um, maybe there's something I'm not teaching you that you really want to know. So give me ideas if you got some stuff that you want to learn. I'd be glad to set up a, a lesson on it. Uh, thanks, everybody. So you guys have a fantastic weekend. Enjoy the, um, if you can get outside and uh, sit in the backyard or wherever get out in the sun it's good for you vitamin d and um we'll see you again at somebody's stream and um members your your um video will be up on the 26th i believe i, I believe I, I posted um about it <laughs> Bear with me. I'm not techie. I'm still learning. So um, 
bear with me until later. We'll see you guys. Have a great day.